What's up, team? Danny here, ready to go live. Answer some of your questions that you guys ooh, had over the weekend. Um, we, we pulled about five of them because a lot of them were very similar um, with the holidays and everything there. Um, so we wanted to give you something with that. Um, but we got some, we took, a, I think, what do we got, like five questions? Sure. So we got five here. Um, we'll kind of answer for you, you know, going forward of like how to tackle some of these issues and obstacles. Most of you guys, we, we, or all of you, we reached out on an individual basis, but we think a lot of people would benefit from, um, would benefit from hearing some of this. So we're going to go ahead and go live here. Put there, I'll be right back. Okay. Let's start start. the first few questions. Do you want me to start answering right now? Yeah, so label the question and then start tackling it. Type it in or just talk? No, just, just talk. Oh, okay. All right. Look, how, look at me with the technology. All right, so some of the main questions we had. Um, for sure, the most popular one was with 4th of July and holidays in general, how do we stay on track? Uh, so we're having a lot of questions with that. So a few different ways that, because we're always going to have holidays, we're always going to have big projects or different things that are going on socially. Uh, one of the ways that we can help kind of stay on track or make sure that we don't fall off the wagon is to prepare ahead of time. So one of the first things we could do is know ahead of time that we're going to be having that social event. We're gonna be doing something. So we wanna make sure that we know ahead of time, okay, I have this this weekend. What do I need to do to make sure that I am prepared for it? Whether that's uh, physically, I prepare meals. So I have meals or I have snacks ready. Um, you can offer to provide a healthy option. So if you're not sure what food's gonna be there, you can offer to have a, to bring a meal, bring a dish so that you know there's gonna be some type of healthy option that you'll be able to eat. Uh, you could also, Eat beforehand is a big thing. So if it's just like an evening or an afternoon thing, eat beforehand so that you're not as uh, not as hungry and you're less tempted to snack on some bad stuff. So preparing a meal beforehand or some snacks beforehand. Um, so preparing ahead of time, eating beforehand. Also, if you're kind of stuck and you really don't have any options, you're hungry, uh, you don't have your healthy option and you don't really have anything else you could do, try to choose the best option available. So whatever the options are, try to choose the one that's probably best. Um, don't stuff yourself on it, have a little bit. And, uh, and then really important thing is we're always gonna slip up, we're always gonna have tough days or we just enjoy the moment, we forget about it. Don't beat yourself up. The next day, the next action, we want to make sure that we're back on track. So if you had a bad weekend, if you fell off the wagon for one meal, one night, one weekend, one week, whatever it is, we're going to get back on track. Don't dwell on it. Learn from it so that in the future we can prepare for it so that it doesn't happen. And then also that next action is going to get back on track. So, and kind of adding to that a little bit, Steve kind of nailed it. I put the post uh, the day of 4th of July too with like the, we call it like the raw fitness plate. You know, when you get there, even if you don't have the best options. So, uh, did you mention like bringing your own dish? Yes. So like bringing your own dish, obviously that would help. But if not, like take half your vet, half your plate, fill it with veggies, take a quarter of it, fill it with protein, and then take, leave the other quarter for whatever options you want. That way you're getting some nutrients in, <clears throat> you know you're doing what you need to, to to get one step closer to your goal, but you're giving yourself some flexibility. And what Steve said at the end is huge. Those that become very successful in any aspect of life, but when it comes to health, wellness, weight loss, things like that, it's all about building the skill of that endeavor, right? So if you're trying to lose weight or you're trying to become healthier, you need to build the adequate skills. And that takes consistency, right? So like Steve mentioned, make your next action back on track is so important for becoming successful in what you're trying to do for the short term and for the long term. And the ones that I've worked with over the years and Steve's worked with, the ones that are the most successful in the long haul are the ones that have that approach to you know, when health and wellness and really a lot of aspects of their life. All right, another common question is, now that we have some, uh, we got some plant protein based plant-based protein now in. Um, what is the difference between the whey or the plant? What should I be choosing? Uh, there are a few differences. So the whey protein it, it has, so there are certain proteins that our body doesn't naturally produce. There you go. All right. 
Um, there's certain proteins that our body doesn't actually produce, and so we need to get those in somehow. The whey protein has all of those. It is more of an animal-based protein, so it has all the complete proteins that we need to produce um, to have a healthy body and do all the uh, operation that our body needs to do. It is slightly have higher calories than the plant. It also has higher protein per serving than uh, the plant as well. It is also dairy based. So one of the main negatives or the reasons why people might not like it is if it is dairy based, if that, if you have a problem with that, that would, that could be an issue or also makes you help. It makes you feel more bloated. So if you've had the whey protein before, then you might want to try the plant. If the whey was bothering you or you feel bloated or you just can't take it down, uh, the plant has less proteins than the whey does. Um, it does also have less calories and less proteins per serving. It is non-dairy. So I guess the main recommendation would be if you're going to, between the two proteins, try the whey. If the whey protein, if you're having problem digesting it or whatever issues, or you just can't take it down, then go from the plant from there and see if the plant works for you. But the whey is probably the one that we want to try. If the whey is working for you, keep with it. I think. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say really much more than that. So kind of summarizing what he said a little bit is the way works really well. Your body, your body digests whey very easily. Um, it gets into the bloodstream, which means it gets into your muscles very, very quickly and easily. That's very, very important for fueling your muscles the right way so you can train hard, build your lean muscle tissue and maintain lean muscle tissue, which is the number one way to keep your metabolism high. So like Steve said, the, the amino acids, whey protein has all of the essential amino acids that you need. So it gets to your body quickly, your body utilizes it very efficiently and quickly, and um, your, body, uh, your body gets a lot of benefits from it. Now, if you can't digest it well, the plant base comes in and, and that's where the plant base is a good option. Um, your body doesn't quite digest it quite as well. Um, however, the one thing I'll say, especially with the plant base we found and we have, is like the mushroom blend and all that. And there's a lot of benefits to that. It also has some MCT fats and fiber, which are very, very beneficial as well. So it almost makes it more of a complete food, um, which is beneficial, but our strawberry and coconut have that as well too. So it's not that it's the plants, the only one that we have that, so. Okay, another common question is uh, for challenge members. So they're saying, um, you know, I've been doing the challenge, I've been doing everything right, I'm getting the sleep in, I'm getting the water in, I'm doing the food plan, getting the exercises in, getting the movement in, and the scale is staying the same, or it might increase a little bit, what's going on? So that's very common and very normal. Normally with challenges, the first week, normally we'll see a we'll see some progress, especially on the scale, most people are concerned about the scale, so they'll see weight loss, a pound or two or more than that, and then the second and third week, we kind of taper off and we kind of flatten out. Your body's getting more adjusted to the new diet that you're on, the new plan, the new workouts that you're doing. So you can, your body starts adjusting to what's going on so you don't see that big drop like you did before. And it is very common and normal. Most of the cases, you then stay kind of where you're at for week two and week three. So first of all, if you see that or you notice that, do not get stressed. Realize that's normal. That's very common. Uh, weight loss in general is rarely linear. It normally has ebbs and flows, ups and downs. Our goal is to have it so that we have a long-term effect where we slowly start getting the direction we want to go rather than oh, today I went down five pounds and tomorrow I went down six. We, it's, it's, it's a long-term process is what it is. So we're not, all right, lose 10 pounds in 10 days and we're going to keep doing that. No, it, it's, it's a long-term thing. We want to create healthy habits that last a while. Uh, some so if you notice that, don't get stressed out about that. The stress a lot of times will lead to more weight gain actually because when you do get stressed out and your body isn't isn't in more of a relaxed state, it's not going to function properly because it's stressed and it's worried about it. So if you look at the scale every single day, I'm up half a pound, I'm up one pound, I'm staying the same, I'm working out, I'm eating, I'm doing everything right. So advice would be to not look at the scale every day just do the weekly check-ins like we have been doing. And then if that is still not going, or you don't see the numbers that you want to, remember this is a long-term process. We want to be healthy for three months from now, six months from now, six years from now, 20 years from now. So don't be too concerned if today I'm up a pound. And that could have a lot to do with water, what you ate the last day, um, with women, with whatever's going on throughout, throughout the month with that stuff. So. There are a lot of different factors, so just keep that in mind with um, with the challenge. If you're not seeing the, the results on the scale, when that's happening, focus on how do I feel? Do I have good energy? Do I feel less stressed? Do I feel stronger? Do I feel healthier? Am um, I in a better mood? Stuff like that. When you start feeling better and notice all those things, then the weight loss will end up 
the results you'll end up seeing on long term? Yeah, my, my advice would be very similar. Um, you know, weight loss is, like Steve said, it's never, ever, ever linear. Um, I thought I posted it in an email to you guys uh, earlier, no, last week. Um, but it was, it was a study, and they, they took some different individuals, and they did, like, they, they measure, or they did, uh, um, they stepped on the scale, like, I think it was, like, 10 times a day for, like, 30 days. And they put little points for, like, when they stepped in the scale, and it was all over the place, right? But if you look at the big picture over time, you know, is you eventually start going down, big picture, right? But it's not ever up and down flows in there. And that's where like the different types of metrics are hugely critical, right? So like our in-body scan, you might weigh in one day and you're, you know, you didn't lose any weight in a, in a week, but you're holding on to three pounds more of water than you were the week before, right? So that's going to fluctuate. Your, your hormones are going to cause your body to fluctuate in weight. Um, building lean muscle versus losing body fat is going to deem you to... to um, fluctuating weight, what you had the day before, what you ate, or how hydrated you are, that's going to affect your, the scale. So the scale is such a, a poor way to determine success of your body in terms of weight loss or fat loss, I should say, because we don't want weight loss, we want fat loss. Um, because you, you could go and, you know, eat 400 calories and, you know, maybe you would lose a bunch of weight, maybe not, maybe you'd gain, or if you did lose, you'd eventually start gaining because that's very bad for your body. But just using this as an example that what would eventually happen is your body would start breaking down your muscle, so then your metabolism would slow, 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 and that would put you in a, a situation where you essentially would destroy your internal body and never be able to lose weight. You'd gain weight and never be able to lose it again, um, just because you would disrupt all your hormones and everything there. Your body needs enough calories to produce all its bodily functions. So it's never linear. It's important to take multiple metrics. So that's why the before photo is very important. That's why taking like waist measurements, that's why doing the scan to see muscle mass, body fat, all of that. We look at those way more than we do weight because weight can be so easily fluctuated on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, I could be five pounds heavier tomorrow than I am today. Um, and, la and lastly is to look at the physiological um, things is to, I'll be with you um, is to look at the physiological um, effects in terms of, you know, how, how is your mood, sleep, uh, um, you know, how is your, your mood, sleep, your, uh, sure. your energy levels, your sex drive, your bowel movements. If you're getting changes there, even how your clothes start to fit differently, those are what you want to look at more so than just the number on the scale because those precede the physical changes always no matter what those always precede the physical changes no matter what's going on so that's very very important for um looking at overturn or overall success there okay we got two more questions uh what are thoughts on the fasting of the 14 to 16 hour fasting basically where you're fasting from the evening of the night before pretty much to the late morning to around uh more like lunchtime, i guess um, so what are our thoughts on that? That helps a lot more with longevity. So if you have a focus on longevity with long-term health, that could be a benefit. Uh, there are a lot of hormonal benefits as well. There's been a lot of studies, um, a lot of research done with, with fasting and, and, and eating and then having your body into that mode where when, when you've been fasting to get your energy, your body is using the stored fat. So when, you're, when it's using that rather than the food that you just ate, that can have a benefit, especially long term. If you haven't tried the fasting before, it might be something you might be interested in. If you are stressed out, don't do it though. So it could have more negative effects on you than positive if you're in a stressed state because your body is not trying to hold on to the nutrients in more of a starving state rather than using your stored fat for energy. So if you're stressed out, if you might hit it, if your hormones are kind of in a fluctuated state, don't try the fasting, but if you have done it, or if you haven't tried it before, it might be something that you might want to look into. Um, if you are fasting, make sure that if you do your workout during your fasting time, as soon as you're done with your workout, that you do eat. So if I was planning to fast until lunch, but I had a workout at 8 a.m., I shouldn't keep fasting until my noon. I should eat afterwards. So make sure that you are breaking the fast after you work out. And then the last question that we have, uh, why are there three or four hours between meals? Why not more time in between meals or why not less? Again, this is something also there's been a lot of studies done. Um, kind of the sweet spot is three to four hours between eating, whether it's a meal, a small meal or a snack. It seems like that amount of time is the right amount of time for your body to kind of be 
in the right mode where it's the metabolism kind of keeps going. We're kind of in fat burning mode throughout the day. Uh, your body is using the fuel throughout the day rather than trying to hoard and starve because it doesn't know when it's going to eat. Or maybe I'm overeating all the time and now my body's always in digestive mode and it's not really properly using all the functions that we need. So it helps keep your blood sugar stable and your metabolism in a good rhythm. And uh, we don't need to eat more than three every three hours. We don't need to eat every hour, every two hours, because first of all, you shouldn't need that much food, shouldn't need that much fuel, and we don't want our body to always be in a digestive mode. Uh, we want it to be able to use it properly. So those were the most common questions. Um, Danny ran away from me. So if you have any more questions about them, comment on them and we'll get to them. And I got a class to do. I'll see you guys.